Uh, hi everyone. Uh, so welcome to lecture two. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to talk about uh, different neurons: McCulloch Pitts neuron, thresholding logic, perceptrons, and even look at the learning algorithm for perceptrons and see a small proof on why that algorithm would converge. And then we'll end with uh, what we call as multi-layer per perceptrons or MLPs, which you would have popularly heard of, and what is the representation power of such MLPs, right? So let's uh, start with the first module, and we'll start with biological neurons, right? So why biological neurons, right? So what we are interested in knowing about is what is known as an artificial neuron, which is the most fundamental unit in an artificial neural network, right? But now why the term artificial neuron, right? So where does this inspiration come from? So the inspiration actually comes from biology. So I think you remember when we were talking about history, we had talked about these biological neurons and the term neurons getting coined somewhere in 1890s, uh, which was the processing unit in the brain, right? And the idea is just as we have these neurons in the brain, which can do fairly complex processing, can we have artificial neurons, which can also help us do some computational processing, right? So that's where the inspiration comes from. So let's just look at what a biological neuron looks like. So here's a picture. I'm showing two neurons here. I'll go through some important parts of the neuron. So you have a dendrite, right, which receives signals from other neurons. These neurons are connected as we had uh, seen in the history again. And then there's the synapse, which is the point of connection of the uh, 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 two neurons. So dendrite is the part from which uh, one neuron receives signals from the other neurons and the point of connection is called uh, a synapse. Uh, and then you have soma, which is the kind of, you could think of as the central processing unit where all the information gets processed. And then you have the axon, once the information has been processed, the axon is responsible for uh, carrying it out to the other neurons, right? So dendrite to receive signals, then synapse is the point of connection between neurons. Soma is where the processing happens in the neurons and exons is where you give the output out or transmit the output to the other neurons. Right? So this is what a biological neuron uh, looks like, right? And let's see like a very cartoonish illustration of how this uh, works, right? How a neuron works, right? So our uh, sense organs, they interact with uh, the outside world, right? So we see, we hear and so on. So now let's assume you are watching some uh, uh, a cartoon or we are watching some uh, comedy uh, movie or serial, right? And let's in this case, it's uh, you're watching something from Sheldon. And then your eyes are seeing it, your ears are hearing it. Uh, let me just get rid of this. So they then relay information to the neurons. Here I am just showing a single neuron. On the next slide, I'll show you that it's not just one neuron, but a network of neurons. But let's just go with this, right? So the neuron receives signals from the sensory organs. It processes it, and then it might decide to take an action, right? So in this case, if the neuron is excited enough, if this is really something very comical, then it might uh, get activated and in turn signal to the other neurons that, hey, we need to do something to evoke laughter, right? So that's a very cartoonish illustration. And as I said, in reality, it's not just like a single uh, neuron, but it's like a network of neurons that you have. And these neurons are arranged in layers so there's that initial set of uh, neurons at the lowest level which interact with the sensory organs and then they get some input and then based on that input some of them might get excited and pass activate other neurons in other layers and this might continue till finally a response is a physical response is evoked and then, and in this case that response could be laughter right so the main takeaway here is that there's like a, this massive network of interconnected neurons which are interacting with each other, uh, arranged in layers, one layer activating the neurons in the other layer and so on. And this layered architecture is something that we'll see frequently uh, through the course. Right? And when I say it's a massively parallel interconnected network, I really mean it, right? Because it has, the average human brain has around 10 raised to 11, that is 100 uh, billion neurons, right? And in this massive network, there's also natural division of work. Right? So, each neuron may not perform all the tasks that humans perform. Or like it, Each neuron may not be responsible for processing visual information as well as auditory information as well as other information. Right? It might just take care of certain information. Right? And one way to demonstrate uh, this, so I'll just first again illustrate with a cartoon and then go to a more real example, is that you might have this neuron which fires only if the visual is funny. 
there might be other neuron which fires only if the speech or the sound is funny right and another neuron which might fire if the text is funny that means whatever is being said is funny and then you might these three neurons might pass on the information to a fourth neuron and that neuron might fire if at least two of the three inputs are on right if two of the three inputs are activated then this is enough for it to fire and it in it turn would do some other action right it might just activate other neurons or might directly be responsible for taking some action right and uh, here uh, i'd like to demonstrate the uh, uh, visual uh, cortex right of the brain right and it has uh, many layers so let me just delete this and then um, do it again yeah, so. so here you have the retina as i was saying this interacts with the outside uh, world and it will be uh, like it's the input that you are receiving right and then this input as you can follow the arrows it will pass through different layers in the brain right and each layer might do some amount of processing and then pass it on to the other layer so you can process the uh, flow and then finally uh, after going through several layers you can follow the arrows that you have here it finally generates some action and this goes to the spinal cord and in this case it might just be to move the hand right you are seeing something in response to which you want to move your hand right so that's how information gets processed across multiple layers and now i'll focus on these uh, red parts here right which are labeled as v1 v2 uh, v4 right and i'll tell you a bit about uh, what they do right again a very simplified uh, explanation of what they try to do right so here layer 1 might just be responsible for detecting edges and corners so i'm looking at uh, people sitting in front of me and this layer might just tell me okay there are some dots there are some edges and that's all that's all the information it will process and i'll pass on this information to the next layer and this next layer might now start looking at this information in a more organized or a group manner that there are feature groups oh these two edges together seem to form a nose these two edges together seem to form eyes and these two uh, sorry these two edges form a mouth and these two dots were actually eyes right and the next layer might again look at bigger objects coming out from these smaller groups here all of this combined to make a face actually right so this is how each layer is process doing a different job and each layer is also doing more and more complex processing or doing more abstraction of the input that was uh, passed right so this is a very toyish explanation of how the human brain works so that is the main takeaways here is that you have a massively parallel interconnected network of neurons there are many layers there are neurons which might do spatial things and then pass it on to other neurons and information flows from one layer to another so that's the main takeaways as far as the deep learning course is concerned or as far as artificial neuron networks are concerned right and as you can read the disclaimers on this on this slide right? i do i know very little about how the human brain works and whatever explanation i have given while is not suitable for any biology course it suffices for the purpose of this course right? so with that disclaimer i'll end this uh, video here and i'll come back uh, and talk to you in module 2